A marquee matchup at the Garden tonight. Knicks hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Knicks had a 10 point lead to start the fourth, but Jalen Williams knocks down the three to put the Thunder up 107 104. He led the way with 33. Final seconds. Knicks down one. Jalen Brunson to the hole. Strong finish. No foul call though. Knicks up one. Next possession. Four seconds left. And it's SGA with the fadeaway. As the seesaw battle continues. Last chance for the Knicks. Brunson with a chance to win it. But it's no good as the Knicks drop their second straight 113 112 the final. Here's Brunson on what the official said on his final drive. He said it wasn't a foul. That's really put it into long story short. That's what he said. So another rough loss for the Knicks tonight. Let's welcome in CP the franchise from Knicks Fan TV who just wrapped up his own post game. CP, what was your feeling on that last bucket by Brunson there and the ref swallowing their whistle? Frustrated and disappointed, Joe. Happy Easter. I hope you're having a great weekend. I mean, it was clear as day that Jalen Brunson uh, was fouled by Lou Dorton and even Chet Holmgren on that final play. I mean, he crash landed into the stanchion. That's how hard uh, of a contact that he took there. And so he deserved to get to the free throw line. I have a feeling that the NBA will release an official report from their uh, officiating crew in the morning that will state that they got the call wrong. But unfortunately for the Knicks, this is another loss in the loss column and a night where they could have taken advantage by uh, rolling up into the third seed into the East. It just was not to be for the Knicks. Yeah, that, that two minute report that and 15 bucks will get you through congestion pricing coming up here soon. Uh, all right. There's a lot of talk about OG Ananobi and whether or not he would be back for this game considering the level of competition. How concerned are you that he's still dealing with this injury management as they call it? Very concerned uh, because after he had the the surgery to remove the bone spurs, it, it was thought that you know he would bounce back and recover nicely. He had engaged in physical contact. He came back for a few games for the Knicks and was able to help them. But you know once he made a, a loud sound and scream in the Knicks game against the Sacramento Kings, it, it was very concerning. And then for him to be sent home from their West Coast trip with more swelling in that area, I, I think it's definitely room for concern. If you're a Knicks fan, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see OG Ananobi until game one of the NBA playoffs, which, which for the Knicks should start around April 20th to the 21st. And so as the team says they're waiting for that injury to calm down a bit, I think they will give it some time to heal. Yeah, they're hoping Knicks fans can calm down a bit after this loss here. All right, Brunson, he's tried to do everything for this team the last two games. I mean, the guy put up 61 in the loss to the Spurs. So who needs to step up to help him out? Well, in the long term, it needs to be Julius Randle when it when it counts. But in the short term, uh, the rest of the Nova trio need to assist, and that is Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart. In this particular loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder, I didn't think Dante DiVincenzo's shot selection was all that good on the defensive end. Uh, Josh Giddy was giving him fits. Josh Hart seems to be a bit pensive in terms of taking shots, especially close to the rim. He's going to need to be a lot more confident for the Knicks, not just now in the final eight games, but also into the postseason. And lastly, Joe, the Knicks bench has been woeful. The Knicks went into this game with a 10-point lead, and it quickly evaporated. They've gotten absolutely nothing from Boyan Bogdanovich and, and Alec Burks, and that's going to be a problem not just now, but also into the postseason as Tom Thibodeau tries to figure out the proper rotation to push this team through. All right, when this team's looked their best, it's because the defense has been their bread and butter. But tonight, you mentioned it. They gave up 38 points in the fourth, and that's after they gave up 130 on Friday night to San Antonio. Are you concerned about fatigue for these guys down the stretch? For sure, and especially when you're not getting as much bench help, it puts a lot of strain on the starters. But I thought what we saw in this fourth quarter was from Jalen Williams to Josh Giddy to Shea Gilgis Alexander in the end, the Oklahoma City Thunder's height was a problem for the Knicks, especially out of their perimeter players. And so that's where you're going to need an OG Ananobi. That's when you're going to need even a Mitchell Robinson to go out there and be a perimeter deterrence. And so for the Knicks, when they continue to operate shorthanded, you, you can only lean on that but for so long until it catches up with you. Yeah 6'6 SGA shooting over 6'2 Deuce McBride and then that 6'6 right. six six guarding Jalen Brunson. It's difficult to shoot over CP the franchise. The roller coaster ride of emotions continues for Knicks fans. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Easter. We'll talk to you soon bud. Cardiac Knicks Joe have a great week. Thanks again.